It's often the case that people with PTSD need to give some sort of account of what happened, but that can be really, really traumatizing. So we're gonna go through a way that you can give a low resolution account that won't be so upsetting to you. Let's do it. Trauma headlines. Yes. Yes. So this is something that I use on a lot of a lot of the people that I encounter with PTSD have got like many, many sort of traumas. Yes. Okay. So yep. the military guys, the police, um, but I mean, even the civilian stuff, like plenty of people seem to incur a lot of trauma. Yeah. I work with a lot of complex trauma in women who've got childhood stuff as well as adult stuff. So there's usually a long list of yep. stuff. Yeah. So there's a couple of issues that come off that. So number one is all those traumas seem to get kind of all mixed up. Okay, and it's kind of like a lot of chaos yep. that people have to deal with. And oftentimes they'll be triggered by an event in their environment and they weren't even sure what it's like. It just comes from nowhere, it comes mm -hmm. from out of the blue. Okay, so we've got this technique to help people untangle all that. Mm -hmm. But the other thing it's really helpful for is uh, oftentimes you've got to see a doctor or a psychologist or an insurance company or whatever and they start asking you about your trauma history and that just activates all your trauma networks yeah. and gets people really kind of emotional. So it can be very helpful to go through this process, okay? And that way you can just, there's my traumas there. Yeah, and know? being very clear, when you say untangle, that's not the same thing as unpack. We're not gonna go through a lot of Thank detail. You. We need kind of, as you can see, we've got our examples up here of like one sentence, a couple yeah. of words to yeah. give the headline, not yeah. the... Thank, thank you. So Sorry. we're going for a really low resolution yes. pass. Okay, we don't want to unpack. We don't look when it comes to doing therapy, and you need to unpack stuff, and you need to go deeper because you've got to make sense of what happened to understand the meaning of what Absolutely. happened. Okay, to accept what happened and learn the lessons and so forth. But that's not what we're talking about right no, now. No. Okay, it's a very superficial pass through. Yeah. Okay. So we've got a couple. We, we actually did a talk on PTSD a little while ago, and we sort of shared some examples of mm -hmm. some traumatic stuff that experienced or that we experienced. And that's what we're going to show you how this works. Yep. Okay. So if you think about a newspaper headline, what does a newspaper headline look like? Okay. Very superficial. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know. Um, you know. Joe blogs was freaked out by you know whatever the crazy event was that happened in Sydney last week. Okay, mm -hmm. it's super, super. And then the actual article itself goes into depth. Mm -hmm. Okay, same with trauma headlines. Okay, so so my the thing that happened to me that I talked about in a previous clip was when I was a medical student, I think I was about 29, okay, I was walking down the road at Orange and I got assaulted at night. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my trauma headline for there would be 29-year-old medical student, okay, that's who. The emotion that I experienced, I was terrified and I was furious. Yes. Okay, the event was... A physical assault by five assailants. And that, that's as brief as it needs to be for this. Yeah, that's yeah. It. I mean, I could go into a lot more detail about that, obviously. But I'm just trying to give the absolute, just the gist. Yes. Okay, of what yes. happened. All right. The location where it occurred and when it occurred. Yeah. Okay. Now, the location and the and the timing is, is actually kind of helpful because it does help you sort of, it de- it helps sort of order the chaos a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Okay. And particularly like you use this with say some of our military services personnel where it's like, right, well this one was in Iraq and this one was in Afghanistan and this yeah. one was in Darwin or whatever. So that can also be helpful. And the emotion stuff is really helpful for kind of the work when I do it is because we start looking for themes of the emotions and the same patterns of emotions coming up over and over and over yeah. again. I see that a lot with mine. Yeah, and when people get activated by some sort of trigger from their PTSD, it's usually these emotions yep. are the ones that bubble yep. up. Okay, yep. so you've got your example yes, here as well. Yes, this was mine. So we talked again. We talked about this in a previous clip. I was about twenty-eight. I was pregnant. I was about, I think maybe thirty-five weeks pregnant. It's going back now. So I was pregnant, and I got rear-ended. By I, I was at a giveaway sign. Someone came up behind me. Didn't they didn't stop? Mm -hmm. um, so I was concerned for the baby. I was annoyed at what the driver did. But in terms of the headline, rear-ended by negligent driver. Yeah. That was it. Yeah, twenty-nine-year-old pregnant woman concerned, annoyed because she was rear-ended by negligent driver. Yeah. And it was in Sydney, New South Wales, and it was 2015. Okay, and that's it. That's the trauma headline. So it's low. Like you, you, you sort of. It's, it'd be hard to give less information. Okay, than than that. All right. But when you're dealing with like police or doctors or insurance companies or whatever that might want to know this information, that's usually all they need. In yeah. fact, I, I, the reason I got onto this was um, I had to do reports for uh, DVA, which is the mm. Australian Veterans um, Association. And what I found was you'd start, the patients would just be oh, like freaking out trying to give an account. But DVA actually didn't need all that detail. They needed that. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. All right. So this, it, it's, but it's proved to be helpful in all kinds of situations. Yeah. Whereas as a 
psychologists, the work that I do with patients, they've got kind of complex trauma history. Sometimes for me, it's actually just having this in front of me. Of, so I'm not having to constantly, oh, when did that happen again? Oh yeah, that's, did that happen before this one or after yeah. this one? When I've got a document like this in front of me and we can kind of work through it in a little bit more structured manner, because if the therapy is structured, it can help kind of make sense of the trauma in kind of a structured way as well. Yeah. Um, we in a process that is not too overwhelming yeah. for the patients because yeah. we're just looking for the headlines. Yeah. Now, having said that, it can, if you've got a therapist, it can be helpful to do this with your therapist. It's mm -hmm. not you know, mandatory. All right. Certainly, the deeper stuff you'd want to be doing with your therapist. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you know, if if you're anticipating this is going to be really hard for you, we'll talk to your doctor about maybe some kind of medication that can calm you down so you can do this. Awesome okay. skills or, before pills. Oh, no, I, I I agree. I agree with that. But if you're just trying to get this done because you're going to have a you know a police bloody investigation or something, you're not going to spend six months getting your skills out between now and next week. Yeah. Okay. All right. Deal. All right. Cool. Okay. So that's trauma headlines. Um, really helpful. So for the psychologists out there, this is a good way yeah. for your patients to kind of summarise things for you, and for the patients, it's a good way to sort of um, untangle the chaos in there. Yeah, we might make a handout with a template of this just with the columns and headings, so that's an easy one for you to use. We'll make that available. Sitecollective.com resources slash trauma. Yes, thanks, thanks for joining us.